Escaping from a black hole, if you're unlucky enough to be there, means picking up speed to be 10 times faster or maybe a trillion times faster than the speed of light. Or even more, no one can say for sure. Since nothing can move faster than light, a black hole absorbs absolutely everything, including directly photons of light and pure energy, and never lets them escape. For this reason, a black hole is the darkest place in the universe, completely unable to emit light. Or is this not so? Indeed, the black hole in the very center of our galaxy has just flared, shining 75 times brighter than usual. How is that even possible? As a matter of fact, if you look at this real picture of a black hole, which was discussed a great number of times, you may find that it's not so black after all. There's a glow around it. Only in fact this glow emanates not from the black hole, but from the accretion disk. That is, the stuff that was accumulated near the event horizon, also known as the Schwarzschild sphere. Any body or particle inside the event horizon can move in only one direction, towards the black hole. Outside the event horizon, matter still has a chance to escape. Particles accumulate at the outer boundary of the event horizon and move in all possible directions, including towards the telescopes locked onto the black hole. The more matter gathers in this region, the more light it emits. It's like a man with a ring of fire around his waist. From afar, you'll get the impression of a burning man. But in fact, there's a sufficiently large space not engulfed in flames between the man and the ring of fire. However, in the case of a black hole, we can only see the ring of fire, since we can't get a view of the black hole itself. Even if you get close to the event horizon and shine a light from a super powerful flashlight on a black hole, it doesn't mean you'll have even the slightest chance to see anything. As soon as the rays of light cross the event horizon, they'll instantly disappear from your field of view. To put it simply, a black hole is like a giant stomach capable of digesting an unlimited amount of food, and the event horizon is a kind of mouth from where there is yet a last chance to escape before it tears matter apart into elementary particles. Here comes a reasonable question. How then do we understand that there's a black hole in the middle of this ring of fire? It's the ring of fire that gives us the answer to all of our questions. A black hole rotates at a huge speed, approximately equal to the speed of light. As a result, the space and time around the black hole get twisted as well, involving the accretion disk of matter also. This ultra-fast rotation generates strong friction accompanied by the release of huge amounts of heat and energy capable of producing even more light. In this case, most of the matter disappears into the track of rotation of the black hole, since it goes within the inner limits of the event horizon. Scientists compare all these data and include them in complex formulas for obtaining approximate size and mass of the black hole. However, all of this cannot fully explain why the black hole Sagittarius A star in the center of our galaxy has flared growing 75 times as bright. And its brightness was so intense that even astronomer Tuan Do from the University of California, Los Angeles, who was keeping watch over the black hole, had mistaken it for a bright star. And he had every reason to do this because there are stars that orbit our black hole closely. The flash came directly from the event horizon of the black hole, but it's quite possible that the stars were no strangers to it. Actually, more than 6,000 stars revolve around the black hole at the center of our galaxy. Closest to the black hole is a group of seven stars called S-class stars, also known as zirconium stars, as they're called because of an increased amount of zirconium in their composition. Some of them have more or less rounded orbits, with stars moving on them at a relatively uniform distance from the black hole. Other stars orbit according to the hula hoop principle, which means that a hula hoop orbit comes close to your waist at a certain point. 
while the other points are as far away from you as possible. Only in contrast to a hula hoop, it's not an orbit that moves, but a star traveling in an orbit around the black hole. At its points closest to the black hole, a star with its gravitational field can factor into the disk of matter around the black hole. One of these stars, called S0-102, has the smallest orbit. It takes S0-102 approximately 11 and a half years to travel in its orbit. At a certain point, it gets closest to the black hole at a distance of 38.9 billion kilometers, about 10.4 billion miles, which is as many as two times the diameter of the solar system. For this reason, the star could become a source of a mysterious flash. However, the radius of the gravity effect produced by the black hole is approximately 3,333 times less than this distance. The black hole needs to get much closer so that it can begin to suck the matter from the star. Apart from that, the black hole is too massive for the star to somehow affect it. The mass of Sagittarius A star is about 4.6 million times greater than that of our Sun. All stars orbiting this giant have significantly lower masses, so they cannot even develop a subtle change in the accretion disk of the black hole. If it's almost impossible that a stellar mass could affect a black hole, then something voluminous, hot and light must be involved here. For example, a cyclopean hydrogen cloud. The G2 glass cloud fits this description perfectly. It was spotted back in 2002. By 2012, the cloud temperature had reached about 10,000 Kelvin, with its mass three times higher than that of the Earth. At the moment it got close to Sagittarius A star, the black hole was expected to tear the cloud apart and draw it into itself. All this accompanied by a beautiful sight with bright flares. Scientists even suggested a small faint star inside this cloud, or even better, another black hole of a mass comparable with a star, thus providing the most spectacular show in the galaxy in the wake of their collision. Scientists have waited long for this event, but it would never happen. So everyone unanimously forgot about the hydrogen cloud, until in May 2019 they discovered the black hole with its brightness bloomed to over 75 times normal. Whether it was a cloud or something else is not yet known. One needs more information to be sure. Above all, this flaring is not optically visible to the human eye. It can only be captured by infrared-sensitive devices. The most annoying thing is that due to the one-way motion of particles in the direction of the black hole, we shall never be able to study this phenomenon and the more so to utilize it. And to think, what a huge source of energy goes to waste. The fact that it goes to waste will probably give us a chance for in-depth study of this effect and even how to use it. As early as the 1970s, renowned physical scientist Stephen Hawking suggested that black holes not only absorb matter, but also evaporate it. That is, if a black hole is small enough, it can evaporate like a drop of water from a boiling kettle. Particles can leave a black hole at the quantum level only, due to the quantum tunneling effect. Normally, a particle can occur at that point of space only where its potential energy is. That is, there's a potential barrier between two points in space, and it would take a large amount of energy to break through. Yet only a quantum particle passes through a barrier like this, absorbing no energy at all. To put it simply, the particle, instead of resisting the powerful gravity of a black hole, roughly speaking, teleports away from its event horizon. Based on this hypothesis, the concept of a singular reactor capable of generating a large amount of energy from continuously evaporating microscopic black holes has been developed. This is just theory only, at least for now. When do you think humanity will be able to keep in check the energy of black holes for its own benefit, if ever?
And do we have a chance to live long enough to see this? Leave your comments below. If you like my video, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so as not to miss the most interesting and mind-boggling episodes still to come. And of course, give it a thumbs up. And please share this video with your friends. Riddle is always much more fun together.